Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Sitting out here in the hot California sun today, beautiful but hot day, planning on doing some solar observing. Um, and I've got a new product that I just got in last week that uh, I bought just for that. Normally I use uh, white light solar filters, the film style, um, but I got something here. It's a little bit more, uh, a little more substantial than a solar film filter. So let's take a look and see what we got. So this is the white light solar Herschel wedge from Altair Astro. And Altair Astro is a uh, UK based uh, astronomy gear manufacturer and retailer. And um, I bought this particular uh, wedge from Land, Sea and Sky, which is an astronomy store here in the United States based in uh, Houston, Texas. And they're actually one of the only um, North American uh, retailers of Altair uh, equipment that I've seen so far. I think there's a couple in Canada that sell Altair stuff as well. But at least for the United States, uh, that particular store was the only one they could find. Uh, cool store, check them out. I'll uh, put a link in the description below where you can go check out what they've got on offer. So let's take a look at the, uh, the wedge here and what you get. All right, so to start off, uh, the wedge comes in a nice little case so you can keep everything together and tucked away when you're not using it. And the wedge itself, grab it out of the box. There we go. Uh, it's a two inch wedge. Um, looks a bit like a normal uh, star diagonal. Uh, of course, it's definitely not normal. Uh, this one does not have a mirror in it. I'll explain that in just a moment. Uh, it comes with a inch and a quarter uh, adapter, so you can use two inch or inch and a quarter eyepieces with this particular wedge, which is good. Uh, we get a uh, set screw. This is for the polarizer. So you can lock it down once you get it to where you want it adjusted. And then it also comes with a little uh, ND3 neutral density filter. And you screw this on to an inch and a quarter eyepiece. Okay, so looking at the wedge, uh, I believe this is the similar design, if not the exact same design, that the uh, solar wedge from APM as well as the Mead. Uh, version. I believe they're the same um, wedge. I think this one is just anodized uh, gold. Uh, looks a little bit different, but um, anatomically and functionally it should be the same as the other two. And before I explain how this works guys, uh, this is not used with any type of front blocking filter whatsoever. Um, you use this full aperture, you, you install it like a uh, you know a normal star diagonal, but you don't put any filter on the front. This does all the filter work uh, for you basically. So again, instead of a mirror, this has a prism. And as the sunlight enters through here, through your telescope, it hits that prism. About 95 to 96% of that light is deflected downward onto the back of this heat sink. This heat sink is uh, made out of ceramic and that takes the most of the brunt of the sunlight and the heat that's coming through your telescope. And this is actually a translucent piece of uh, ceramic. So when you have this uh, focused on the sun, you'll see a, a little bright spot in the back and that kind of serves as a, uh, basically a solar finder, which is nice. Because if you ever try to uh, find the sun without a finder at all, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So anyway, most of that light, 95 to 96% is deflected into that heat sink. And the remaining uh, five to 4% is deflected up, bounced up uh, into a uh, permanent neutral density filter ND3 that's installed in here and it goes through that filter into a polarizing filter and what that polarizing filter allows you to do is to adjust it so you can change the brightness of the image that you're seeing in the eyepiece. Now I've done plenty of white light solar observing before using uh, film filters. I've never used a glass one on the front aperture but I have used film. Uh, the stuff that you get from uh, Batter Planetarium and uh, the Astro Solar Film. And then I think Thousand Oaks also has solar filter foam as well. I've used those before, uh, great for looking at sunspots. Um, but the wedge is supposed to be um, kind of the next step up from using a film or a glass solar filter. It's supposed to be a better image quality, sharper image um, with more contrast, making it easier to see those really faint uh, solar features on the sun especially like the granulation, the convection cells, the, the bubbly surface of the sun's photosphere. 
uh, if you will. Uh, I've never seen um, the granulation with a film filter, but the first time I went out and used this, I was able to see it like almost instantly, no problem whatsoever. And that's under, you know, average seeing conditions. So um, I can definitely tell you that that is a true statement that the solar wedge is indeed um, providing a better quality image than say a, a film or a glass front aperture filter. So I'm definitely happy with it. I'm just gonna give you a really quick um, demonstration on how it's intended to be uh, initially set up when you come out and observe with it for the first time. So as I stated before, the wedge comes with a neutral density filter. It's a one and a quarter inch. You attach that to your eyepiece. After you get that installed, you insert the eyepiece into the solar wedge. And then while looking through it, you rotate the polarizer, whichever way um, darkens the image. And uh, you set the image to be darker than what you would normally want or be comfortable with observing. Uh, that way, the idea is once you remove your eyepiece and take off the neutral density filter on the eyepiece and insert your eyepiece back in for observation, now the image should be at like the perfect level of brightness. Uh, now what I've found is I actually prefer to leave the neutral density filter on because that helps for me at least cut the brightness down even more and that helps bring up the contrast so I can see some of the solar features a little bit better. Uh, I've only used it a couple of times and um, I've been blown away with it honestly and the seeing conditions aren't even that great. I'd say the seeing for today is probably average maybe a three out of five and I was able to easily see the convection cells on the sun. And the first time I used it, there was actually a, uh, a facula spot on the, um, I want to say it was on the western edge of the sun's disk you know, near the limb. And it was just beautiful. It was just brilliant white. It was very contrasty, easy to see. Uh, it just blew my mind um, how well this thing uh, actually works compared to a regular film filter. Hopefully, uh, when the sun starts waking up soon, um, you know, we start getting sunspots. It's going to be very, very nice to, to see those sunspots and, and such good, uh, you know, sharp contrast, uh, get lots of details out of the dark and the lighter areas around the sunspot. So I'm really looking forward to using this once the sun really starts waking up, whenever that may be, probably a few months away at least, you know, before we start seeing larger sunspots. So that's pretty much it. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to put some images and some uh, video that I've taken with my uh, cameras using the Altair Solar Wedge. But yeah, as of right now, I'm very happy with it and uh, I definitely recommend it. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, take care of each other. And I